Well, hey there, Mission Control. Welcome back to our uh, continuation of the system overview series. Today, we're going to be talking about the server that we use and the wireless internet that we need to make this whole thing work. So let's jump in. All right, so now I'm standing outside of HAB1, right there. All the way up there behind our barn is the house. That's where the internet's at. Now we live way out in the middle of nowhere, so getting internet out here is not the easiest thing. We actually have satellite internet. Not very good, uh, but it's what we can get. Oh, all those people living in the city where you have fast internet, I envy you for that. Not for living in the city though, I still prefer to be here. Uh, so we gotta get signal from the house where the satellite and the cell phone is at, because uh, we have uh, cell phone internet as well. We gotta pump it out here. So how do you do that? Well, even though I work in the tech industry, I'm not really good with all the radio frequency stuff. So I had to do quite a bit of research. Uh, I chose to go with a company called Ubiquity and they make a wireless repeater. So you can actually have a unit all the way up at the house, which we have in the window, and another one out here in the building. And then we can pump secure internet from the house all the way out here and then share it in the building. So let's go inside and we'll talk about that some more. And this is one of those times where I feel like you end up having to be a jack of all trades in order to make something like this work. I had no idea how to make wireless internet go from one place to the other. I mean, you kind of understand the basics of it, routers and repeaters and all that, but it took me a long time to figure out how to get all the settings just right and lots of up and down on this here ladder to get up to the wireless repeater, uh, which is all the way up at the very top of the building here, aimed up towards the house. So I have the sending unit, the transmit unit up at the house and the receiving unit here. Now they're both TX and RX. They both transmit and receive, of course, but you get the idea. One's pitching, one's receiving here. One's pitching, one's catching. Two different sports there, sorry. Uh, so the internet comes in and goes out right at the peak of the building here. And now you are standing just where I was just at and there's wire coming across the top of the ceiling and it goes right up there to the wireless access point. So we're receiving a wireless transmission over there, but then we're wired from there to there. That's just how you have to do it. And that is another Ubiquiti Systems uh, Wi-Fi access point. Now their uh, interface with uh, each of these devices is really slick and uh, very advanced. So I would not recommend Ubiquiti if you just want to like plug and play. That is definitely not plug and play. Uh, but it does a really good job, it's very secure, and you have lots of ways that you can customize it, not that I've ever even dealt with them. Uh, but very good systems, really happy with it. So why do we need uh, all this access out here? Let's talk about that. One of the key reasons we need uh, the wireless out here is because of the automation that we put in this building. I'm gonna have a video coming up, in fact, I think it's the next video in this series, uh, where we're going to go over all the automation, all the different pieces, what it's all about, why it exists. Um, but I'll give you a little insight is we need automation so that you're not constantly tied to this system. Uh, if you're familiar with farmers or ranchers, you'll hear the term husbandry used a lot, animal husbandry in particular. And after raising cattle, raising horses, and now trying to uh, dip our toes, uh, we'll jump right in, I guess. We're not dipping anything. We're jumping right in the deep end of uh, growing sustainable food. Uh, you really understand what they meant, is you're married to the system. You really can't go anywhere. In fact, for us, when we want to go on vacation, uh, even just for a weekend, we got to find cow sitters, horse sitters, dog sitters, cat sitters, now plant sitters, microgreen sitters, uh, to take care of everything. It, it's quite a bit of work. So um, we put a server in and a, what's called a static IP, which means that just like how your house has an address on it, uh, that doesn't change so that you can tell people, hey, I live here, this is my address, 123 John Doe Lane. Um, they know that you live at 123 John Doe Lane. Well, a static IP is the same thing only for the internet. So now everyone knows that I live at this certain internet address and I can access it and connect into my server. Now, I want that server separate from the rest of my stuff so hopefully nobody attacks me. Uh, it's just a matter of time though until someone does. Um, but I have the server set up to receive and control the information coming from and to send information to all these control units. So it's, it's my interface to the outside world. All these little devices, they're all Wi-Fi uh, and they all talk to the access point that's in this building. 
from the access point. That information goes to the transmit receive device here, up to the house, into the cellular router that we have, which has our static IP on it, and then I can access this anywhere, anytime. So right now, we have basically a, 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 a web page. That is what it is, not basically, that is what it is. It's just a simple HTML web page that then talks via what's P, it's known as PHP script, which is a way that you can uh, talk to a database, and we use a MySQL database. Now, I'm, I'm including all this information because I know a lot of you probably don't care, but there's a lot of you who do care about our setup. So uh, for, if you don't know what I just said, don't worry about it. Uh, but for those that do care, you know what I'm talking about. We use MySQL, uh, PHP to HTML, uh, and that's our current web interface. Now, that's all just a precursor uh, to the mobile app that we want to create. And I am looking for volunteers if you'd like to help uh, write that mobile app uh, because I had to teach myself PHP, I had to teach myself HTML, and I'm not very good at it. Uh, so I'd like to come up with a really slick um, app that you have on your smart device that can access this entire system and give you alarm. So a good example of that is, let's say uh, the power goes out out here. Well, we need a dead man switch so that we know that the power's out. Why is that important? Well, if the power's out for too long, the fish, they don't get oxygen uh, because these valves stop running and then the, the beds, they don't fill, fill and drain, they don't disrupt the water, which means eventually the fish just die because they suffocate. So I need to put together an app. That's just one use case, just one use case for the app. Um, but everything in here, uh, the sensor suite, all the sensors that connect to it, we want to be able to talk to everything, see what's going on. You know, you could be sitting at the movie theater and all of a sudden your phone starts to vibrate because you forgot to turn the water off. If you have a greenhouse, you know that's a real problem. Uh, I've done it, I think, it like three or four times and almost destroyed stuff out here. Um, if you have a, this mobile app, you know water's flowing. Turn it off. And you don't need to get up, you don't need to freak out. You just hit the button that says turn it off and you're done. Or you have the smart app that says, hey, you left the house, the water's running, I'm turning it off until you tell me to turn it back on. So those are the types of things that this server-based system allows us to do. It's just an enabler for a whole bunch of stuff that's coming that really allows us to be separated from the system and not married to it. And that's important when we start developing the smaller versions of this and get it for normal families. They're not gonna wanna be tied to this thing like what we are. That's totally not gonna work. No one's gonna buy that, no one's gonna want that. Uh, they're going to be like, dude, it's just easier for me to go to the grocery store. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, not that the food in the grocery store is going to be better for you, but most people don't care. So we've got to find a way to make this as easy as possible, and that server-based architecture with automation is how we're going to do that. So we're going to have a video in the future to talk just about challenges, so I'm not going to go over all that right now. Uh, there are challenges in setting this all up. Just learning how to do it all uh, takes quite a bit. but. Um, I didn't know how to do it when I started and figured it out uh, thanks to YouTube and Google and everything else that's out there, as well as some friends that helped give me some pointers that do know how to do these things. So grateful to everyone who helped me there. In our next uh, video, we're going to go over the actual Arduinos and the sensors that we've chosen, why we chose them, what they do, and all those kind of things. And um, we'll talk about challenges with that in another video as well. So lots of good stuff that uh, I think is going to come of this. Now, think about Mars real fast here and how that helps us. Is if you think about your Martian outpost, you're way out there, you're by yourself, and you got you know three or four, six people maybe that are on your crew, you're, you're not really just, you're gonna have a lot of things you have to do every day. You're gonna get up, do tons of chores, keep everything going, keep everything running, and oh yeah, you probably wanna do some science in there because you're on another planet by yourself, but you're not gonna wanna be tied to the system either. You know, you, you need to be able to have the freedom to go out, get in the rover, go do things, and know while you're out there, that if something goes wrong, you're going to get a notification and you can do something about it. Or, remotely from Earth, people can be watching the system as well so that you have more eyes on it than just yourself. I think that's going to be pretty important when we start talking about taking agriculture and making it available to everybody again. There was a time in history when everyone knew how to grow their own food. And if you didn't, you didn't last very long. Uh, or you had to have another skill that you could trade with, of course, the barter system. I think we're going to end up going back in time when people do need to know how to grow their own food again for a multitude of reasons. If anything, just for the fact that there's going to be a lot of people and you're going to 
your prices are just going to keep going up and up and eventually you're going to say you know what it's not worth paying this i'd rather grow it eventually that's in the future but uh you're not going to know how to grow everything i thought it would be pretty easy but it's actually really hard so if you could have an extra set of eyes that come in through a server that can watch and see what's going on not like big brother watching but like the sensors and the lights and maybe a fungus detector or you know air quality detector and then alert you because you know they know something that you don't know yet and then help you i don't know let's say avoid getting fungus on your plants because they know that the conditions are perfect and you know the systems told them that that's gonna be very helpful and that's that mars use case again coming in is you know, kind of putting yourself out there, imagine, imagine you're out there and then what type of things could you do? Now, we could do that here on Earth as well. And of course, that would help us all out. So uh, there you go. Next time we'll talk about Arduino sensors. Uh, thanks for following along in this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian.